All right, so uh, to start off this session, uh, Son had talked about uh, using Twitter to look at sort of what's behind what people are tweeting about. When are they sick? When are they worried about the flu? Uh, what I'm doing is actually looking at the tweets themselves to find out what they're telling us about how people speak. So uh, here, I'm trying to map uh, language variation and dialect geography, so sort of who says what where within different forms of English. Uh, this is a big question in sociolinguistics, and uh, it tells us a lot about how languages change and how changes in language spread. Uh, and it can be important because different, different dialects of a language will have different features. If we want to do certain formal analyses of the language or look at how um, the structure of language uh, is constructed, you need to know what dialect your experiment subjects are going to be using or what they're familiar with if you want to, say, train them on a new one. Uh, this is the result of seven years of calling people up uh, on the telephone and asking them a whole bunch of questions about how they speak. Uh, and it's, I don't know if it's beautiful to you guys, but to me this is a thing of complete beauty. Uh, but it has some problems, like the West is definitely not uh, as completely blobbish as it looks here. Um, and also, it took seven years to do this. Uh, and that was only getting about 700 respondents. So can we do this better, faster, and cheaper? Uh, right. So here's an example. Um, so Southern American English, we all know people say y'all. And people tweet that a lot, too. So we can build a kernel density estimate map of where people tweet y'all. And you can see it's exactly where you would expect, except it also shows up in like cities, because this is all mixed in with where people are tweeting a lot and where people are living. You know, So we need some way of establishing a baseline. And what I'm doing right now is just taking something that we expect not to vary by dialect. So here I'm searching for tweets where people just use I. Um, we can build a similar distribution for that. And then by dividing the target distribution by the baseline distribution, we can construct a prominence of the form that we're looking for. Uh, so in case language doesn't interest you, first I wanted to check this on uh, something that has a little bit more of a physical component. So here's a radar map. Uh, there was a big storm moving through. This is September 20th, I think. Um, and so big storm in the middle of the country. And sure enough, if we search for people tweeting about raining, uh, we're seeing that it's um, so orange here is the more prominent, blue is less prominent, people are tweeting about this, and we're seeing that it's popping up exactly where we were seeing on the radar a bunch of rain. OK. Uh, now, here's another example. Um, you might have seen this. Uh, back in March, this went viral, basically. This was another um, sort of gold standard study. Uh, this was based on the Harvard Dialect Survey done in 2000 through 2003 by Bert Vox. And then Josh Katz at NC State uh, put together a nearest neighbor model of um, what people say in the country, basically. Uh, this is really great data. It was 30,000 people responding online. But again, it was still, it's three years. We can't look for anything like short. And also by now, it's 10 years out of date. Well, looking at Twitter, this is the result of uh, five searches, each one basically spanning one day of Twitter usage. So this took about five days to compile. And here's what we're getting for y'all. Here's what we're getting for you guys. And uh, it also works on really specific things. I don't, has anybody here ever been to Pittsburgh? I'm from there. And uh, we have our own style of speech. And one of the things is our second person plural is yins. Uh, and as you can see, it is only used by us. Uh, but yeah, you know, now we know that. You know? Uh, a couple of other examples here. So, uh, you know, here's an example where the with freeways, the idea of the West is just being the West is uh, actually kind of borne out. Um, also, Atlanta, for some reason, is part of the West in terms of using freeways. Highways is pretty consistent across the country. And then, uh, yeah, the, this one I tossed in because I was giving a guest lecture in a sociolinguistics class, and the undergrads would love it. Uh, Hella. Uh, is pretty much restricted to um, Northern California. Uh, so let's see. Um, 
Right, actually, wow, I blew through that a lot faster. So um, there's a bunch of other maps I've been looking at. Um, one of the things I'm trying to expand this to is actual syntactic constructions. So again, being a Pittsburgher, I speak weird. And one of the things I can say is something needs done. Uh, the slide needs changed, my glass needs refilled, stuff like that. Uh, it's very restricted. And it turns out you can actually pick up on this on Twitter as well um, by searching for something like the phrase needs done. You can't search for like verbs in general because Twitter isn't tagged for parts of speech. Um, but just by looking at needs done, we can actually get a map that correlates with the uh, with the original Atlas of North American English uh, data um, with an R squared value of 0.91. So I was pretty psyched about that too. Uh, in terms of like the major problems that I'm encountering right now and what I would really you know, like some help from if anybody has any ideas is, um, you know, first off, there's these limitations on what can be searched for because we don't have the tags. So if anybody has ideas about how to improve the search system uh, or just other things that would be worth mapping, I'd be super interested. Um, and also thinking about how to properly build and normalize the maps. Um, I'm just using a Gaussian kernel des density estimation technique, um, but something better must exist. So thanks a bunch. That was fascinating. I I have to say, with my accent, I would just I, I would be noise in your system, but <laughs> but it, but in the world of big data, I don't count, so it doesn't really matter. Um, questions? How does this mapping uh, reflect indigenous and linguistic traditions? Mm. So yeah, so on Twitter, the only thing we know is locations of people. Um, one thing I've been thinking about doing is trying to move to like Facebook, where we'd actually have a lot more data about people's demographics and sociology. Um, at the moment, I haven't really looked into it because I just I don't have access to the right features, but I would be super interested in that. Good question. Anything else? Okay, this is great. Thank you.